Today on The Brewery Show, we are at a very special place. It's called Plan B Farm Brewery, and it's located in Poughkeepsie, New York. And we're here to find out what it's like brewing at a farm brewery when you're creating local wild ales. So let's go explore right now on The Brewery Show. My name is Evan Watson. I'm the brewer and bad farmer, <laughs> half-assed farmer of uh, Plan B Farm Brewery. My name is Emily Watson, and I am the co-owner and co-founder of Plan B Farm Brewery. So Plan A was to be uh, a traveling musician. When we decided we wanted to have a family and we wanted to have a place of our own that more resembled our background living in the Midwest, we had to come up with a plan B. So we decided to marry the two ideas of Evan working in a brewery part-time um, and his aspirations to open his own brewery and then my background of growing up in a farming community and um, enjoying working outdoors. So we decided that we would grow all the ingredients and then turn them into beer. So the B in plan B, there's multiple things that that B stands for. One of the largest things that the bees do for us is that they collect um, all of the yeast that we use in order to ferment all of our beers. In a more pragmatic sense, I, was, I came to New York from Indiana uh, as a musician. I grew up in the, in the Midwest. <laughs> wow, we're gonna go back far, I guess. I guess we need to, kind of. And I came out to New York uh, after college with a record deal. As, as a touring musician, I played the Pleasantville Music Festival in Pleasantville, New York with my band. And after the show, I met somebody who said, hey, I really love your, your music and I work for this brewery that sponsors the festivals in the, basically in the backyard of Captain Lawrence Brewing Company at the time. I said, I love, well, I love your beer. I just had, I think, the liquid gold or, you know, whatever. And uh, I was like, yeah, I love the beer. And he said, well, come by sometime. And, and I took him up eventually. I got a gig just kind of pouring samples and working in the tasting room part time when I was touring. And, and then I would back and forth, I, I kind of, I worked at Captain Larry's was on the road playing music. Uh, Scott, the owner, was was kind enough to always bring me back into to working. As I got less, uh, I wouldn't say less serious, probably more serious about music, but more frustrated with the entertainment business, I, uh, I, I started to lean more on, on brewing and, and then I transitioned into working there more full time. And we um, ended up renting a small property in Fishkill where we could test out our theories, where we could give it a go in what we would call the Petri dish. It was a one barrel system. We just got to experiment and just to see what would come out of it. And we were fortunate enough that after two years, we were able to expand to our current property in Poughkeepsie, which is a 25 acre farm and a 10 barrel system. So we started brewing in 2013. We've brewed probably three to four different styles each month since the beginning. So on any given year, we might have 60 different styles in, in one year. And it's based on whatever we can get our hands on that's growing, local or in our own backyard. And there's a lot to work with. There's edible flowers, there's herbs, there's fruit vegetables, we even work with vegetables. But other than that, we really just, with the seasons, as the seasons change and what's become available to us, that's what we brew. I mean, we've repeated certain styles over the last three years, but we've probably made over a hundred different beers at this point. The moniker of farm brewery is, is pretty varied, and New York is definitely at the front of that because there is active legislation to, to separate a microbrewer's license from a farm brewer's license in, in 2013. We were one of the first to, to get the license. From a, like a legal, practical standpoint, a farm brewery in the state of New York currently still is one that uses 20% local ingredients by weight. But that being said, there, you know, there are hundreds of New York farm breweries, some of which are in New York City. They're not on farms. Our concept of farm brewery was to grow everything and, and constantly 
as uh, Emily said, reduce the radius of our ingredient sourcing down to a, a place where we say, I grew this and I processed it myself. And to truly understand the flavor of, of, a, of a region, I feel like um, you have to do that. On the property, there was a barn, uh, which we're currently sitting in, which was built around the 1830s. And we've been renovating this to become the brew house and then eventually to become the bar and tasting room. On top of that, we've also inherited a wild orchard, so there's over 200 trees. We tried to have somebody come out and identify what species they are, but they're so cross-pollinated with one another that they're completely unique to Plan B. So we started by cultivating yeast off of fruit skins growing around us. We had muscadine grapes, we had peaches from our tree uh, that was on the property in Fishkill. And we found that the yeast was too closely tied to the fruit. So anything we made with muscadine grapes tastes like wine or champagne, and anything with peach tastes like a Berliner Weiss. So Evan came up with this idea, well, what if we used raw honey? Because there's a lot of yeast in, in honey, and it would be a great dissection of, of the terroir and the exact area since they forage in a three mile radius. We're looking to do a lot more farming this spring. We're gonna be bringing on um, a farmer who's gonna help us out. We weren't able to transfer our gardening skills to farming skills. Uh, even though I grew up in a farming community, we didn't really do the kind of things that we're trying to do here. So it, it's, there's a big learning curve for us. We're looking to do a lot. We're gonna try to grow almost everything that we need for the coming year. And anything that we can't grow here, we just source from local farms. So I'm sure there will always be something that we will be either adding to whatever we already grow or sourcing unique things that we can't grow here on the farm. In the Hudson Valley, uh, the community has been very receptive to what we're doing. I think the local war movement also is going on at the same time where people are more interested in where their food comes from. We just have more of a, a, a conscious community that's interested in sourcing things locally. The vinegar pork of, of, or the Chicago dog, you know, like the Chicago dog that came from Jewish and Polish uh, uh, German immigrants, right? That in the margins that had to have cheap food. And, and those are the things that make this country beautiful. And we lost a lot of that through the homogenization uh, and pasteurization of product and culture. Now to get back to it, we have to deal with limited resources. And at, especially at a time when everything is readily available, to deal with limited resources is now becoming a bit cooler because we lost our grit. We lost that tangible quality that makes, oh, that's from this region, that's from that region. We lost all of that. And the way to get it back is to limit yourself. And, and that's the way that we, we, we brew, is, and that's why we brew with limitations. So at our farm stand, if somebody has never tried a sour, and they ask me, well, what, what does that mean? Like, what, what's gonna happen? Like, what am I gonna taste? Um, I usually explain to them that it's not, it's not going to be beery, it's going to more resemble a wine or a cider. And that will sometimes, if I can at least draw them in so that they have an understanding, they can conceptualize what's about to happen. Like, then they sort of calm down a little bit and they're, they're more open to trying, to trying something that's called a sour, which kind of might scare some people who, who, are, who that concept is completely foreign to them. For people who've never had sours, it can, it can just overwhelm them. And so it just blows their mind and they just kind of, ah! Being able to relate sours to other types of fermented beverages really helps draw people in and for them to kind of focus um, because it can be just a shock, I think, to the palate for people. You know, we do make very acidic beers, very polarizing beers. And people will expect that from us, to have you know, a, a red cherry beer with its tart as hell, you know. And, I, and there's a place for that, and I, and, I, and I do like making them. But what I want to do is kind of dial back, it's, this is nerdy, but like, go get out of this 3.2 pH range and get back to like a, a, a around 4 pH. You know, most beer, 
uh, commercial beer, non-sour beer, is you're at a pH range somewhere in 4.2 and, and 5 pH. Very, you know, alkaline compared to the beers that we do. Starved palates from growing up with macro light lager uh, have really polarized to, you know, the other end of the spectrum with, uh, you know, double IPAs or imperial Russian stouts and, and bourbon barrels and all these things that are the farthest thing from beer, really. They're like, oh, you know, it's got cayenne pepper and cinnamon and, and it was aged in a rum barrel. And you're like, it tastes nothing like beer, right? And I would love to get back to a place where beer looks more like, like the macro lockers, but it's just done well. We brew beer from the community for the community. So we're, we're not interested in distribution. Um, our plan is to never go into distribution. It's, it's not something that we're interested in. We really enjoy being able to connect with our community members, um, be able to hand the beer to them personally. You can only get the beer pretty much from the farm directly on Saturdays. Or we have something called The Hive, which is a beer membership, and it's like a CSA. Um, it's community shared, everybody throws their money in, and then each month you basically get a, a, a half case or a full case of beer. So those are really the, the main two outlets. Our ability to source ingredients has guided the way that we, we brew, and so I have to find quince, and I have to find black currant to get flavors that are on par and comparable to, to the flavors that American beer drinkers are currently expecting. So the other thing I, I want to aspire to is to also lower lower prices of our beer. You know, the expectation of American sour beers costing thirty dollars for a seven fifty is dangerous because that's not beer. I mean, I mean, maybe if you if you aged it, you know, maybe if it's a true lambic. But if we were talking about, I mean, a true which you can't do in my opinion in this country. But these beers being very inexpensive and. And that's what beer is. It's a table beverage that you enjoy with your community, that's hopefully made with ingredients from your community. You can drink a lot of it, and it's not expensive. I mean, our beers are expensive, so I have to work on that. People always ask us what's next and where are we going, and um, we don't want to become a brewery that just increases the number of barrels we do each year. That's that's not really what we're interested in. We don't want to grow our business vertically. We've talked about growing Plan B uh, horizontally, um, having different things that can that people can come and do on the farm. We're looking to put in uh, walking trails, so you could come to the 25 acres, walk around uh, with a beer in hand. We've even had fantasies about putting casks of beer in the woods with little signs that say drink me so that unexpectedly on your walk you could find special special beers hiding in the woods just waiting for you. We're constantly trying to think of things that would be fun, educational and interesting for people to do on the property that don't necessarily have to do with just us making more beer. I've had a, I've been lucky to 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 get to in, to look into um, what we admire as the coolest occupations. And there is nothing that's better than, than being a farm brewer and a farmer brewer. People think it's romantic, it's, it's the opposite. It's, 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 you know, reaping what you sow, the, you know, the old adage, literally. I gotta create my own world where I live, and then I get to export that world into somebody's hand via a beverage that makes them feel better. I mean, that's the coolest thing ever. I mean, like I said, I've, I've gotten to tour around, I've played arenas, I've gotten to do all this stuff. You know, I've got to be like, I was never, I would never call myself a rock star, but I got to at least see through that, that window and, and there's nothing better than, than, than working your land and learning those lessons and carving out your own world with your family. It's pretty amazing.
Well, that about wraps things up here at Plan B Farm Brewery. Thanks for checking out the episode. If you want to find out more about them, you can check all the links in the description. And of course, you can find them on Facebook or on their website and come up here on Saturdays to purchase beer from them directly at their farm stand. This is a great place. You definitely want to check it out if you like sour beer especially. And uh, thanks again for watching. See you at the next place. Cheers. Let me get you a beer, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs>